All right, welcome everybody, all my friends, Nerd Knights watchers, YouTube subscribers, and YouTube members to episode 15 of Hero Quest, where we're going to be painting the Goblin. So, everybody's been requesting the I finish this, so that's what I'm going to do. I want to say thank you, as always, first to my YouTube members. You obviously are awesome for your donations and everything you do to support this channel. Uh, thank you so much. If you're new to this channel, or if you've been here and you've watched a couple of videos, hit that subscribe button. I ain't going nowhere. Get those updates. Get those, you know, uh, hey, got a new video. But without further ado, let's go. The first thing we're going to do, as always, is scrape off these nasty mold lines and unfortunately Hasbro did not um, go all out on these miniatures so they are kind of bleh uh, but they got some old lines to scrape them off no big deal uh, once you're done with that put them with some sticky tack on an old spray can cap or whatever you have to hold them in place so you can spray over the entire thing I'm using my airbrush but you can also use your spray can whatever you have available and just spray it all in black Once we're ready to tango with everything else, we're going to start with our base colors. And the first thing we're going to do is Orc Flesh. Now, I am airbrushing this on just to save some time. If I'm going to do one large surface area, I'm going to do it in an airbrush. But you do not have to do this. You can just paint it on, but we are using Orc Flesh. For our white eyeballs, we're going to be using some regular white, whatever kind of white you do have. It doesn't need to be anything specific. And we're going to put some little slits because we're going to do some shading here in a little bit. And it's going to just be easier to uh, fix it once we're done. And while you're at the eyeballs, go ahead and take some of that Abaddon black or whatever kind of black you do have and put some little pupils in there. Next, for all of our little metal bits and pieces, we're going to take some lead belcher and we're going to slap that on. This is what your metal areas should look like after putting on your lead belcher. For our little goblin earrings, probably that he stole from a treasure trove, we're going to use some Retributor armor. For our little angry goblin teeth, we're going to be using some Morgast bone on those. For the fur sticking underneath our little pauldron on our goblin, we're going to use some Celestra Gray. It's on underneath the pauldron, and there's some sticking up underneath the wrist wraps. For the undergarment or chest garment, we're going to be using some Ushabdi Bone. And for a vast majority of our leather pieces to include the hand wraps and the leather strap going across his chest and belt and ankles, we're going to be using some Mornfang Brown. And this is what all of your leather areas should look like and cover. For our loincloth area, we're going to be using some Skaven Blight Dinge on the front and the back. And for the little pieces on the belt, it looks like bone in the card art, so we're going to use just some basic white. 
We're going to go back to our Morgas bone for this and the little piece on the hilt of the sword. And this is why I use a wet pellet specifically because we can just go back to it without having to waste more paint. Next, we're going to use some Retributor armor a little bit on that front uh, little chest, chest strap area. And again, this is why I use wet pellet. And finally, we're going to go back to our lead belcher or whatever silver you are using and use it on our little buckle on our right hand wrap. That's it for the base colors. To start our shading process, we're gonna go over that nice green goblin skin, and we're gonna use some Athanian camo shade. Fun fact, goblins are my favorite creature to play in any video game, specifically when I've played WoW. Uh, I love them. I don't know why, I just like goblins. I like how tricky they are, and you can't trust them. Even though you can trust me, it's like to totally counterintuitive to who I am as a person, but whatever. Anyways, we're going to use some Agrax Earthshade on all of our leather pieces and every other piece that we have done so far to include the loincloth. The only thing we're not going to be using Agrax Earthshade on, we're going to use Nolan Oil here in a second on, is all of our metal pieces. Now, while you're doing all this shading and you got to let it dry for a minute, uh, head over to our Instagram, nerd.nights, and subscribe over there so you can see what we're doing, what's going on. I always post pictures of what's upcoming. And finally, all your metal pieces, go ahead and hit it with that Nolan oil. Once you are completely dry, I mean completely, not like 80%, 90% dry, completely dry. We're gonna go back over with our focal point of the miniature, and that is the goblin skin. We're gonna do that first. We're gonna take some of that auric flesh, and we're gonna start going on all of the raised areas of our miniature. Now, the focal point that everyone's gonna look at is the face of our goblin. So obviously, you wanna get all those raised cheeks uh, on top of the head, the nose, the chin area, uh, the ears, the floppy little ears that are kinda of going crazy. And we're just gonna really work that in. Make sure you're thinning your paints, nice like skim milk consistency, and you're probably gonna need two layers of this. And you really wanna not get it into the recesses whatsoever. We're just building up those highlights and you can start seeing that shade really stand out once we are doing our reapplication of our base coat. Once you're satisfied with your reapplication of auric flesh, we're gonna take some Nurgling Green and we're gonna really not use this crazy amount of Nurgling Green. We're just gonna focus on the raised areas of the face to include the chin, the nose area, the cheekbones on top of the ears, on top of the head, fingertips a little bit into the thigh area and on those back muscles just a little bit. In this instance, less is more. You want it to look like a two-tone variation of green, but you don't want to overpower it. You want to let that auric flesh really stand out with just some lighter green that's stuck out on some of our raised surfaces. And finally, we're gonna take some very thin Kislev flesh and we're just gonna put this on some raised areas of our goblin flesh. Now I went on the ears a little bit on the cheekbones and on the eyebrow area, and a little bit on the hands, nothing crazy. It's just gonna give it a little sudden hint of fleshiness as you can kind of see in the card art. So don't go overboard with this. Put this very sparingly in little places here and there and don't I can't stress enough, do not go overboard with it. Next, we're gonna use some iron breaker on the pauldrons and the kneecap areas and the metal that is around the legs. We are not gonna use this specifically on the sword. We're gonna use some ruined fang steel here in a second for that.
And like I just said, use some Ruin Fang Steel on the blade of that sword. And for our metal areas, we're going to do kind of a mixture of 50-50 mixture of Doom Bowl Brown and Rhinox Hide. And we're going to use this to reapply to the raised surfaces of our leather. Now, I know this isn't the original... Um, color we used but I think this is kind of the best color that matches the card art and it's going to give it that nice leathery kind of older but reddish look that we see. For our bony type areas especially the teeth and the bottom hilt of our sword and the undergarment on the chest, we're gonna go with Ushabdi Bone. Now this is our original base color, but we're just gonna just not go crazy with it and just reapply this. Uh, be careful on those teeth because those teeth are extremely small. For our little fur area, we're just going to take a reapplication. Well, not a reapplication, we're just going to apply some Ultherin Gray on top of that to make it stand out just a little bit. And as we're coming down the stretch, if you need to reapply some white or some black on the eyes, like I am doing right here, go ahead and hit that up right now just to kind of clean up just a little bit. And finally, your favorite part. Of painting this miniature because that means you're done. Abaddon black on the base. Not doing anything crazy if you want to use gray, whatever you want to use on your miniatures. I just specifically use black. And that's it. You did it. It looks fantastic. I know you guys did a great job because you guys always send me pictures and updates of what you're painting and how you're painting it. So I know you guys do a great job. So thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate everybody who watched this video, leaves a comment, sends me pictures, interacts with me, makes me more motivated to paint more miniatures and do more videos. Leave me a comment below of what you want to see painted next. Uh, I'm still going to do all the furniture, so stay tuned. And until next time, paint on.